focus on growth. This is part two. I said focus on growth instead of focusing on, you know, questioning yourself, focusing on comparisons. Okay. Sometimes you look at what other people are doing. Sometimes it looks like your friends have gone ahead of you. Your contemporaries have gone ahead of you. You feel left behind, but I need you to understand as long as you focus on growth, you will hit your targets. As long as you focus on growth, you will hit your goals. You will fulfill your goals. Your life will be full. Your life will be overflowing. As long as you are growing, all is well with you. And that's why we're talking about growth. I told you to focus on growth because growth is your design. You were designed to keep growing till you exit the earth. So when you are not growing, I mean, fulfillment will elude you. When you are not growing, fulfillment will elude you. Secondly, I told you to focus on growth because growth is a requirement. In this world that we live in, to maintain relevance, you have to keep growing. I told you that what was celebrated yesterday will become normal today, okay? The, the, the innovations of yesterday, they become the norm today. And if you are not careful, the world will leave you behind. What people used to celebrate, now they will begin to tolerate. I gave the illustration of the five-year-old. Nobody looks at a five-year-old now and claps for him because he's running. But when he took his first step as a toddler, everybody celebrated. And it's the same thing with you. What people used to celebrate about you two years ago, three years ago, has become normal right now. So to maintain your relevance, you have to keep growing. I told you that it's not that people don't like you, but if people don't need you, they don't clamor for your attention. It's not because they don't like you. If what you are bringing to the table does not affect their bottom line, people will not clamor for your attention, your advice, your contribution. So you have to keep growing. Thirdly, I told you last week that more often than not, focus inspires recognition. You see, you hardly notice what you are not looking for. So when you focus on growth, you recognize opportunities to grow faster and then you expedite your success. Now, I told you again last week that for you to keep growing, you have to focus on three major areas of your life. And it was on that note that we rounded up last week. So let's look at that I mean, again, and then we proceed from there this evening. I told you, if you're going to keep growing, you need to focus on these three areas. Mindset, personal efficiency, then association and environment. Okay? Mindset, personal efficiency, association and environment. And we have three more sessions. So today we are going to look at mindset. And then next week we'll talk about personal efficiency. And then the final session, we're going to look at association and environment. So tonight, let's talk about your mindset. I told you, if you are going to keep growing, your thinking, the way you think will have to keep growing. As a matter of fact, every time you say you have grown, it is because your mindset is evolving. Anything that happens in your life that is not an overflow of the state of your mind is only a temporary experience. Last week, I told you that I want you to make a switch from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. I want you to make a switch from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. I want you to make the switch from an expert's mindset to a learner's mindset. You see, experts believe they know what they need to know. And that is the reason why they cannot learn. A learner believes that everything he does is an experiment. So he is always willing to learn. And just this afternoon, I, I stumbled on this interesting thought, okay, from the Bible, the book of Proverbs chapter 20, 28 and verse 26, such an interesting read. I want to read it to you this evening from the message translation of the Bible. Look at what it says, Proverbs 28 and verse 26. It says, if you think you know it all, you are a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others. Let's read it again, slowly this time around. If you think you know it all, you are a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others. In other words, 
The fool is not the person that does not know anything. The fool actually is the person who thinks he knows everything he needs to know. And that describes what we may call an expert. That person that feels, look, as far as this field is concerned, I know everything that I need to know. I remember so many years ago, I was listening to Dr. Miles Monroe. And, and he said he was listening to, you know, an, a leadership expert. And the person said, I have, I have read everything ever written on leadership. And Dr. Miles said, you don't make such statements. And he said something interesting. He said, I wrote some stuff about leadership last week that I'm yet to publish. You have not read that. So you cannot say you have read everything that has been written about leadership. You know, but sometimes when we want to impress other people with our knowledge, we try to come across like, look, I know everything. But nobody knows everything. The wisest of men. Okay, the most intelligent of men are learners. They have a student's approach to life. And, and that's what I want all of us to, you know, to do. As a matter of fact, if you are growing, it's one of the ways you can tell that you are growing. Your approach to life is the approach of a student. You still have a sense of awe. You are still inquisitive. You are still asking more questions more than you are teaching wisdom. This is important. You are asking more questions more than you are answering other people's questions. I'm reminded of Jesus at the age of 12. He was in the temple discussing with scholars, you know, and, and, and teachers. The Bible records that they marveled at his questions, not his answers. As a matter of fact, intelligence is not measured by what you have to say, but by the kind of questions that you are asking. Okay, the kind of questions that you are asking. What are we talking about tonight? We want to focus on your mindset. And what I'm saying is this. If you are going to grow, then the way you think has got to change. That's the big idea tonight. If you are going to grow, the way you think will have to change. Let us begin with this question and i want you to take a few minutes as a matter of fact i'm going to spend about maybe one minute or two to take responses for those on facebook i mean from those on facebook and those on mixlr so i'm i want you to get ready to type your response to this question right now and now this is the question what is your greatest asset what is your greatest asset quickly quickly i want you to give me an answer all right i'm waiting for you what is your greatest asset? Okay, on Facebook, on MixLR, go ahead, type an answer. Type an answer. What do you think is your greatest asset? Okay, you are all correct. Your greatest asset is not your money. Your greatest asset is not your car. Your greatest asset is not your degrees. Your greatest asset, okay, is not, is not, is not your house. Your greatest asset is not how many, you know, stocks you have. Your greatest asset is your mind. Okay. Your greatest asset is your mind. Let me give you expressions that, that captures what I'm trying to say to you. You see how you think is how you see. You know, it's amazing how that three of us can stand and be looking at the same thing. And when you ask us to describe it, we will describe three different things. Because you see, what you are looking at is not what you are seeing. How you think is how you see. Okay? Look at another one. How you think is how far you will go in life. How you think is how far you will go in life, okay? How you think is how much you will ever achieve. See, I'm sure you have heard it said that what happens to you is not as important as how you respond. This is what I have found out. How you respond is a function of how you think. And so this is what I'm trying to say. There are certain things that are going to happen in the future that, I mean, it does not matter whether you know whether they are going to happen or not. There are some opportunities that are going to come to some people and they are going to mismanage those opportunities. There are some people, opportunities are going to come in their future and they are going to make the most of those opportunities. There are people, challenges are going to come in the future and those challenges will take them out. And I'm not a prophet of doom. See, 
if I see the way you think, I can predict your future. See, because whether it's a challenge or an opportunity, I mean opportunity, how you think is how you are going to respond. That is the reason why how you think is very, very important. You remember that guy in Matthew chapter 25? We call it the parable of talents. There were three guys. The master was traveling. He gave one four talents. He gave another one two. He gave another one one. And the Bible records that he gave them those opportunities, those resources based on their capacity. There was a third guy. That guy said, I am afraid. He said, I was afraid. He said to, of his master, he said, because you are a hard man reaping where you have not sown. He said, so I have gone, I, I hid your talent and because I don't want to lose it. He said, now here is your talent. Now the master said something to him. The master said, you are wicked and you are lazy. You are wicked and you are lazy. He said, because even if your opinion of me is correct, you should have responded differently. If you truly believe I am a hard man reaping where I have not sown, then you should have taken my money to the bank instead of just keeping it away. Then when I got back, I would have received it back from you, but with interest. But did you notice that there were three people, two responded positively, one responded negatively, but they were dealing exactly with the same boss, a same economy. Same opportunity, but see, this is the challenge. The lazy guy treated his opportunity like a trap. Okay, he thought he was being used. He did not know that he was being helped. And that's what happens to a person who does not know how to upgrade his thoughts. And what I'm trying to say to you is, if your thinking does not change, you will call your helpers enemies. If your thinking does not change, a circumstance that are coming to your life to help you become better, you will call it a challenge. You will call your teachers, you know, you will call your mentors tormentors. You will call your teachers, you know, your enemies. You will treat people wrongly. And it's not about what you're going through. It's not about the people. It is actually the way you think. I think it's a good place for us to look at the words of King Solomon, where he said that be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Okay? Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. This is what I am saying, and this is very profound. Hard work is not as important. Your spiritual activities, prayer, fasting, all of those things are good. But they are not as important as the way you think. As a matter of fact, the greatest miracle ever is the transformation of the human mind. Until the way a person thinks changes, the person's life cannot change. I'm reminded of Joshua in the Bible. God came to Joshua. Think about this. And God said, I want you to take the responsibility of leading the Jews okay, into the promised land. Moses, my servant, is dead. I am commissioning you. Then God said to him, God said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Therein shall you meditate day and night, that you may be careful to observe to do all that is written in it. Then will you make your way prosperous and have success. This is interesting. God did not say to him, I will make you succeed. God said to him, Everything you need to succeed is already in the book. You have to read it. You have to observe to do all that is written in it. In other words, your success is a function of the transformation of your mind, not just because of your association. That's one big mistake that I see so many people make. Somebody feels, if I can just associate myself with people that are successful, I will be successful. That is half true. Okay, it's not the association. It is the transformation that takes place because of the association that will help you succeed. In other words, just as sleeping in a garage will not, will never make you a car, associating with successful people will not make you successful if you are not conscious of what needs to happen as you associate with them. You need to let their thinking become your thinking. That is when you can have what they have. Ladies and gentlemen, the message I brought to you tonight is simple, but very profound. Every stage of life and every role in life demands a specific mindset. If you cannot think on that level, you will not be able to sustain life on that level. Okay? Every role, 
Every stage in life demands a specific mindset. You remember the Jews, when they were in Egypt, they were slaves for over 400 years. Then Moses led them to freedom. Now, they were free, but they couldn't stop thinking like slaves. So every time they faced a challenge, they blamed Moses, they blamed God. And you see, that is what impoverished, I mean, you know, poor people do. It's not a a man's condition that makes him poor. It is the way he thinks and the way he responds to life that makes him poor. So many years ago, one of the first major lessons about success that I learned is very simple but profound. It says that the first law of success is responsibility. You are not ready to succeed until you start taking responsibility for your own life. But these Jews will not take responsibility. It was either the fault of Moses or the fault of God. Their default response to their challenges was to murmur, was to complain. That was exactly what they did when they were in Egypt. Now they were free men, free women, but they could not think like free people. So all of them, except two, died in the wilderness. Some Bible scholars recorded that not not less than about 600,000 adults left, you know, Egypt with Moses. Out of over 600,000, just to made it to the promised land because they couldn't change their mindset. I need you to understand this. God was on their side. Okay? God was on their side. God wanted them to make it. And that's why I'm saying to, especially those of us who are people of faith, that God wants it for you is not enough. You have to want what God wants for you. You have to think on that level. I am saying if you are in paid employment right now and you want to switch to entrepreneurship and you want to succeed in business, there is a mindset, okay, that success in business requires. You want to succeed, okay, and you know, as, as, as a venture capitalist, you want to invest in multiple businesses, there is a mindset. You want to lead other people, there is a mindset it requires. You want to succeed in your marriage, there is a mindset it requires. If you don't have that mindset, even if that thing happens in your life, it's only a temporary experience. It's going to be a struggle. You will not be able to maintain it. Listen, there is a way millionaires think. That's the truth. There is a way industrialists think. There is a way strong men think. There is a way strong women think. You need to press into their mindset for you to be, I mean, for you to be able to replicate their experience. I'm reminded of this words by John Maxwell. Now listen, everybody knows every time I speak, I recommend John Maxwell, but tonight's recommendation is huge. There is a book that, listen, I talk about it all the time because it helped me. It changed my life and I believe it will change yours. Until you have read that book, I am not sure that you are serious about upgrading your thoughts or changing your life. It's a book. I mean, it's the book, How Successful People Think by John C. Maxwell, how successful people think. He said something profound in that book I want to share with you right now. Consider it with me. John Maxwell says, he said, I have studied successful people for 40 years. And though the diversity you find among them is astounding, I have found that they are all alike in one way. How they think. That is the one thing that separates successful people from unsuccessful ones. And here's the good news. How successful people think can be learned. If you can change your thinking, you can change your life. And that's my message to you tonight. To change your life, you need to change your thinking. Now, don't forget our topic is focus on growth. So I am not saying that your life is bad. As a matter of fact, this is something I've been saying repeatedly in the last few weeks. You see, you cannot go from bad to better. It is only something that is good that can be made better. So when we're talking about focusing on growth, we're talking about improving. We are not saying it because you are bad. We're saying it because you are good and you have the potential to be better. Don't forget, I've said it to you before in one of these sessions, that success is a moving target. Okay. When it comes to success, you never arrive. Every next level is actually the first step. All right. To the next level. 
what you call your next level right now, when you get there, it becomes the stepping stone to yet another next level. And then when you get to that next level, it becomes a prelude to yet another next level. So we never arrive. We never settle. We go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from accomplishment to accomplishment, from success to success. And this is the message. For me to move to the next level, whatever that next level is, I have to upgrade my mindset. For you to move from your current level to whatever the next level for you is, you have to upgrade your mindset. And what I want to do with the time I have left tonight is to share with you some suggestions, actually five of them, what I have done, what I am doing to upgrade my mindset. Okay, can we consider that tonight and then we can round up? Okay, you want to upgrade your mindset. Why don't you take this following five steps with me? This is number one. Embrace the truth. Embrace the truth. If your thinking has to change, if your mindset will be upgraded, you have to start by saying to yourself, my thinking has to change. You see, you can't be in denial and grow at the same time. You've got to embrace the truth. If my current mindset could produce my desired results, it would have produced my desired results by now. But if things are not working, the first place for us to visit is how we think. Okay, so tell yourself the truth. My thinking has to change. I remember so many years ago, a friend of mine did me um, such a big favor. I don't know if he has done anything bigger than that for me. We were just having a conversation and I was telling him about some of my aspirations, some things I was planning to do. And then he, and he looked at me, you know, dead in the eyes. And he said to me, he said, you know, you, know you struggle with self-limiting thoughts. I mean, I was shocked, felt a little bit insultive. I mean, this is me. I'm a leader. Okay. I'm known for leading people. And he said to me, he said, he said, when I look at you, it's obvious that you, you place a lot of limitations on yourself. He told me, he said, you don't see yourself for who you really are. You don't place the right value on your content and the things that you are putting out there. You know, we, it was a casual conversation, but when I got home, I thought about it and, and I had to tell myself the truth. Okay, maybe you need to change the way you see yourself. Maybe you need to change the premium you place on, on your content. Maybe you, you need to treat yourself differently because people will not treat you better than you treat yourself. Okay, people will not, will not take you farther than you are willing to go. But until you embrace the truth and tell yourself, you know, like I had to sit back, I came back and I said to myself, okay, I think I, I am struggling with self-limiting beliefs. Okay, and so I started to pray about it. I started to study about it. I started to challenge my own thinking, okay, as far as that is concerned. But I couldn't start that process until I was able to admit this is what I struggle with. So I want you to embrace the truth. Tell yourself the truth. I am afraid. I am fearful. Okay, you, you can write it down. Um, 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 I am, I'm not as diligent as I should be. I, I am not as confident as I should be. I am mentally lazy, you know, and this is not something you write down and say to yourself over and over again, but you just want to start by embracing the truth. You see, because I learned so many years ago that nothing becomes dynamic until it is specific. You cannot improve on something you have not yet identified. So you've got to do what? Embrace the truth. Then step number two, define the gap. Okay. Define the gap. What do I mean? Honestly, define your current mindset. Okay, like I said to myself, at that time of my life, I, I think I struggle with self-limiting belief. That is defining your current mindset. Then, then the next step is define your desired mindset. And so I said to myself, I, I want to be free in my mind. I want to believe so much that when I dream it, I can achieve it. I, you know, you know, sometimes in, in that season of my life, every time, you know, people compliment me, I will play it down. Anytime there is an opportunity, I would, I would act like, Oh, you know, I really don't want it. And in my mind, I thought it was humility, but you need to understand it dawned on me. Oh, this is not humility. So I was able to say to myself, my desired mindset is, look, I'm going to open doors for other people, but if I want something, I will go for it. Let, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. See, in another conversation with a friend, I was asking him questions. Then I was, I'd not even released my first book. And I told him, I said, you know, I struggle with, um, why I'm writing books. 
I said, at the back of my mind, I really want to add value to people. I really want to, you know, impact lives. Uh, but on the other side, I also need to make money. And, and this friend of mine looked me in the face and said, so who told you you have to choose? Who told you you cannot do both at the same time? He said, what you need to do is tell yourself the truth. I'm writing to add value to people and I am writing because I need to exchange my knowledge for wealth. He said, tell yourself that truth. So I was able to define, okay, you know what? This is the mindset I want to have, okay? I want to be that kind of person that, look, I'm adding value to people and when it comes to naming my prize, you know, I, I tell you what my prize is and I'm not shy anytime, you know, my benefit is being discussed. Okay, let me fast forward about two or three years later. This incident now um, kind of revealed to me that I was changing, I was growing, I was getting better. So there was this friend who now called me and said, you know what, um, I have this association I belong to and I want you to come and speak. Uh, and now this was not a religious organization. For those who are very familiar with me, my regular day job is that of a pastor. And then on the other side, I do personal development and leadership, you know, trainings and all of that. And so this person was asking me to come speak in my capacity as a coach. Uh, and I said to her, okay, so this is my fee. If you want me to speak at this event, okay, I'm not going to mention the figure because I don't want to scare you. See, but before then, I, I would just say, oh, anything you give me is okay. But I said, no, this is a job I do and I'm good at it. So this is how much I charge. And then this lady said, um, ah, I, 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 I don't think they have that kind of money. As a matter of fact, you know, I was going to pay out of my own pocket. I, I was not going to ask them to pay. So I, I was just hoping that you will do it for me. Then I said to her, I said, imagine that in your lifetime, you have just one um, opportunity with me like that, where I get to give you whatever you want. Will you want to use that opportunity for these people? Because once you use it right now, you may not have that kind of opportunity anymore. Guess what she said? She said, no. And that was the end. She said, I would rather use this opportunity for something else than use it for these people. So if they can't afford to pay you your fee, let's leave it that way. And that was the end. I'm not sure you got that. The same person that was going to make me expend myself for the benefit of others as long as I lower my price was not willing to go the extra mile to place the value on myself, I mean, on me that I've placed on myself. And it was not, we're still friends till today. It's okay. That was when it dawned on me. I think I'm growing. I think I'm learning. See, because this is what I found out. People will not treat you better than you treat yourself. Okay? People will not take you where you are not willing to go. So until you place value on yourself, people will not place value on you. But let's get back to the message. So we're talking about defining the gap. So first, you honestly define the mindset that you currently operate with. Then you define the mindset that you desire to operate with. And then you ask yourself, what is the difference? Okay, so the moment you define both, you, you will see the gap that you need to feel. Okay, I learned I had to start saying no without feeling guilty. I learned I have to start, you know, prioritizing my well-being, prioritizing my advantage, prioritizing my benefit, even though by default I place the interest of others above my interest. See, but if I don't take care of myself, people will not take care of me like I will take care of myself. So I need to take care of myself. I was able to see that gap and then I started to do something about it. That leads us to step number three. What are we talking about? We're talking about upgrading your mindset. So number one, I said, embrace the truth. Number two, define the gap. Number three, commit to the process. Okay, commit to the process. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline to change a mindset. And listen, it will be uncomfortable. You know, like that day, my friend told me, you, 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 I think you struggle with self-limiting beliefs. It, it, it was not easy for me to bear. And for months after that, you know, now that I have admitted, I've embraced, I was no longer in denial. Every opportunity where I have a conversation, you know, and, and that thing plays out, it, it becomes obvious. You know, like I said to you that focus on growth will now help you to recognize learning opportunities faster. Every time there's a scenario where I play down on my strengths, okay, I take the limelight away from myself. I play down on my values. It becomes very glaring and it can be very painful and very uncomfortable. Okay, listen to me. What I'm saying is that you have decided you want to change does not mean that you have changed. That you desire change 
does not mean you have changed. You will have to go through the process. And honestly, if you don't commit to the process, you will back out because it will take time. It will take a lot of hard work. So what am I asking you to do? Until you see results, don't relent. Okay? Until you see results, don't relent. I still had a conversation with somebody this week that at the end of the conversation, I, I said to myself, I, I think you were playing down on your strengths there. You, you still were not standing for yourself. And, and so I, I reminded myself, no, you need to place value on yourself. You can't allow people to treat you anyhow. And, I'm, and it's not conflict. See, it has nothing to do with other people, but everything to do with me. Okay, so I would have that conversation with myself and it's not comfortable. Most of the time, we don't like to tell ourselves or, I mean, admit negative things about ourselves. But until you tell yourself, I need to grow in this area, I need to work on this area, and then you start doing the work, okay, you will not change. But this is what I've discovered. The process is fulfilling. The process is rewarding. That even before things begin to change, you will begin to change. And personal transformation has its own rewards. It's fulfilling. Even before people notice, just the fact that you are keeping your own promise to yourself makes you feel good, makes you begin to feel better. But we are not done. Commit to the process. Until your results change, don't relent. Whatever it is you have decided to do to upgrade your mindset, you keep at it until you begin to see different results. Now, what's step number four? Step number four is expose yourself to light. Expose yourself to light. What am I talking about? What is light? Light is timely and relevant information about your desired mindset. Let me say that again. Light is timely and relevant information about your desired mindset. So how do you expose yourself to light? Invest in books, videos, podcasts, seminars, trainings, and coaching. That's how you expose yourself to light. So how much of light you want will determine how much investment you make. Nobody will invest in you more than you are willing to invest in yourself. So you have to expose yourself to light deliberately, intentionally, okay? If you need to get a coach, some people are in that state where, look, you can't do this by yourself. You need a coach. Invest, get somebody to coach you. Another thing I'm going to ask you to do is to choose a model. Who is a model? A living example of your next level, okay? Look for somebody who is already living the life you desire to live and then follow the person closely consume all their content if you i mean content if you can be in the room with them maybe the person is speaking somewhere or the person is on a podcast make sure i have certain individuals in my life like that everything they do i follow closely and it's not just about you know farms in like it they say it's not just about being able to name drop it's about, and that's why i'm not going to name name any name so decide your model for yourself and follow the person closely. Okay, when I say follow them, I'm not just talking about social media. Consume their content. If they are going to be somewhere, if you can be there physically, be there. Observe them closely and follow their example. Training is important. Reading books are important, but this is what I found out. Those principles come to life when you are observing them in a living person. So choose your model and follow the person Closely, that's how you expose yourself to light by investing in books and videos and trainings, in seminars, in coaching. Okay, and then you choose a mod model and follow the person closely. And finally, tonight, if you are going to upgrade your mindset, there is a final principle I want to share with you. I simply call it use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. And what am I saying? Anything you learn either from a coaching session, from a session like this, from your model, whatever principle comes at you, make sure that you practice it immediately in your life. If you don't use it, you will lose it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Another way you use it is you share it with others. So one of the things I love to do is to talk about what I'm learning. By the way, other people benefit from what you're sharing. But much more than that, you see, we master what we talk about. We master what we teach. We master what we share. 
when I started out, I, you know, my objective was not to, to, to become a leadership and personal development trainer or coach. That was not my objective. I just wanted to grow. I just wanted to become better. And so I started reading John Maxwell's books and then started following some other models and all of that. And then after some time, I found out that sharing what I was learning was helping me to master what I was learning. And that was how I got into training. That was how I got into teaching. So now it's it's like getting two for the price of one. I love to teach. I love to share, not just because I love to impart knowledge, but because that is also the easiest way I get to master the principles that I am learning. So we've talked tonight about upgrading your mindset because until your mind changes, your life has not changed. Okay. Until your mind changes, your life has not changed. And what I've done tonight is share with you five steps. I believe that when you take them and you see, these are not five steps you take once. So if I was going to, uh, you know, modify this, I would say six steps and the sixth step will be do it again. All right, so let's look at the five all over again. The first one is embrace the truth. The second one is define the gap. The third one is commit to the process. The fourth is expose yourself to light and then use it or you will lose it. And like I said, number six will be do it again. So you do this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. Why am I saying that? So let's assume, like, I mean, using myself as an example, I was struggling with, self-limiting beliefs, I think I've gotten to a point where I'm better now. I'm not where I'm going yet, but I'm, I'm better than I used to be. Okay. Now for me to get better than I am right now, I have to embrace the truth. So I tell myself I'm not who I used to be, but I'm not who I need to be. So I still need to get better. Then I will define the gap. Okay. So what's the gap I need to feel? I define the gap. Then I commit myself to the process, I tell myself the truth. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take a lot of work. And until I see results, I'm not going to relent. Then because of that, I will expose myself to light. And so what did, what it means is this. See, the light, when, we say, when I say light, I told you is timely and relevant information about your desired mindset. See, but the light that brought you here is not enough to take you there. So when I'm doing it again now, I want to expose myself to stronger light. I want to expose myself to more intensity. I want to expose myself to another perspective at stage four. Then I go to stage five. I use it. Then I go back to stage one. I embrace the truth. I define the gap. I commit to the process. Then I expose myself to light and then I use it. The more we repeat that process is the more we get better. The more we repeat that process is the more we get better. As our mindset is changing, our habits will change, our environment will change, the things we attract into our lives will change, our personal, even our internal reality will change. Even before things begin to change on the external, you will just notice you are happier now. You feel better with yourself. And a lot of times, life responds to the way you feel on the inside. That's why you will notice confident people seem to attract more opportunities because people just like to be around them. People want to work with them. It's like you carry your own atmosphere everywhere you go. And the trick is because your mind is changing. As long as your mind is changing, everything about you will change for the better. Let us stop there tonight and we will continue next week, Wednesday. So next Wednesday, we're going to talk about personal efficiency. If you're going to keep growing, that's another major area you want to focus on. Personal efficiency.